So what's fundamentally important is that we come together and we have a common framework, a common language for security maturity benchmarking. Right? And, and that's where the essential eight comes into play. And that there are other frameworks and, and we uh, don't just say that the essential eight is the only one to think of, but the essential eight is a very common one used. It's driven by the Australian government, um, comes out of the Australian Cyber Security Centre, which is part of the Australian Signals Directorate. And this is a government body that's been running for over 75 years and they are there to guide us and provide basic recommendations on what we should be doing. So you have a framework here that will provide that business type conversation. Now the Essential 8 has been designed to protect Microsoft based internet connected networks, right? Microsoft Windows based internet connected networks. So there are other platforms that is, extend a little bit more into cloud app scenarios. Um, but let's just take a look at the essential eight. Now, the, the government has been really specific with their wording here with this framework. They talk about the essential eight and uh, my colleagues in my team constantly remind me, this is not the nice to have, it's not good to have, this is just the essential, right? This is the must have. So bear that in mind when you think about the essential eight, um, government's really guiding that this shouldn't be optional. And these are the eight, um, controls. The, the Australian Cyber Security Centre actually publishes uh, 37 different strategies and 900 controls. Right? We're just focusing on eight, that essential eight. So application control, um, patching applications, disabling your, your untrusted macros and user application hardening. They're all there, that top row is there to prevent the malware delivery and execution. The segment down towards the bottom left there in orange um, are the items that are there to limit the extent of cyber security incidents, uh, restricting admin privileges, uh, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense there, patching operating systems, um, multi-factor uh, multi authentication. I think a lot of people are doing quite well now at, at getting MFA in place. Um, but also then the last square bottom right there is about making sure we can recover. Um, so unlike those stories I shared a moment ago, making sure that backups are safe and cannot get uh, encrypted themselves is a key part of it. So these essential eight controls, there's various goals in each one of those. If we look at application control or, or application whitelisting, which is effectively what that is, um, you know, that's there to prevent unauthorized software from running in your environment. We have things like remediating, uh, remediating the known security vulnerabilities. They're, they're often published by uh, our vendors. Um, limiting access you know, um, to systems or, or particularly that powerful access or controlling access um, and protecting against risky active activities and maintaining the availability of our, our critical data. So each of these essential eight controls has a different role to play. Now, if you haven't looked at this before, that might seem all quite simple. Um, in one sense it is, but on the other sense, um, I'm gonna to talk to you in a moment about the depths and the breadth uh, of the essential eight. Um, but let's just take a look at a really simple scenario where the essential eight is in action. Yeah, this is a common scenario, but hey, a user gets a malicious scene. We all know we have filtering systems in place. We hope that um, threatening links don't come through. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes they do, and we all know that there's going to be someone that probably clicks the link. Much to our dissatisfaction, um, the link gets clicked. In this case, we've got a keylogger that gets installed on the user machine. The user logs into something, you know, a key system. Um, in this case, it's showing, hey, a, a bank account. Um, the bad guy gets a username password from the keylogger to whatever that system might be. And in this case, they're, they're transferring out funds. So how does the essential eight work? Uh, it's pretty quite, it's pretty simple in this scenario. The application whitelisting, the application controls we spoke about, that would have stopped malicious software being deployed in the first place, right? So end of story. Um, and I think we understand the, what two-factor authentication does, but it's gonna protect the bad guys actually getting the account, uh, getting access to the system, whatever that system is, um, you know, even if they do have the credentials, they don't have that second factor of authentication. So it is really designed to help you with that basic 
um, scenario, but it, it does have different maturity levels as we go. So let's talk about those. Level zero, if you haven't yet implemented anything that aligns with the essential eight, you're going to pull up at, a, at level zero for each of those controls. Once you get to level one maturity, and, and you only reach level one maturity if you've reached level one implementation on each of those eight controls, then you classify yourself as reaching essential eight maturity level one. Um, but these are really designed to cover against those broad global attacks, that broadcast approach, scattergun, uh, I'm not targeting any individual or any specific organisation, I'm just trying to find where I can gain an advantage as a, as a cyber attacker. Um, that's what level one is designed to protect against. Level two, certainly this is where you're protecting against more sophisticated attacks, um, where you're effectively the, the target of a um, someone who's looking at a specific type of business, as it says there, or, or individuals that have specific privileges. Okay, so this is actually relatively targeted at maybe an industry type or a role type in an organisation. And finally, level three, which is the top level, if you are in a organisation that uh, maintains particularly sensitive data, um, that would, would be a high value target, or perhaps you're in a political scenario that might make you a high target, then you certainly want to look to move through to level three when you can, um, because this is where you're protecting against weaknesses of a specific cybersecurity posture or a specific particular business that would be directly targeted.